Our team name is Team Gator Wings. It comes from the name of our lab, which is the Wireless Information Networking Group. And then Gators comes from the fact that we're at the University of Florida and the Gators are our mascot. Tan and I have worked together for 20 years on wireless communications and networking. And when we heard about the SE2 competition, then we recruited David and Tyler to join our team and some other great students. Hi, I'm Tyler Ward. I'm a PhD student at the University of Florida and a member of Team Gator Wings. Uh, my name is David Green. I'm a PhD student here at the University of Florida and a member of Team Gator Wings. Tan and I worked on the original DARPA Spectrum Challenge, and it was a great competition, um, a big intellectual challenge, and a lot of fun. And when we heard about the SC2 competition, we really thought that that would be a great opportunity for us to compete against the best teams in the world. And, and we also loved the, the non-stop intellectual challenge, and um, there's really, really cool things that we really love to do. I think one of the things that sets our team apart is the fact that uh, Tan and I have been working together on wireless communications projects for 20 years now. And those span a wide range of different areas in communications and relating to the challenges of the Spectrum Collaboration Challenge. And these two guys, Tyler and David, are just like Swiss Army knives of engineering that come in and are able to help us tackle all of the very complicated problems that come up in this competition. It's a great opportunity to try to implement a lot of practical stuff. Uh, so we always talk, Dr. Wong always talks about uh, the theoretical side of, of this project, but to actually put it into action, to actually write the code, to actually get these radios talking to each other, working with other peer networks and things like that, it's really cool uh, and it's really cool to show off. I think one of the things we found out during this competition is that as academics, People might think we, we just teach all these this math and we write all these papers with math in it and that math is just sort of funny business. But in this competition, we took the things that we teach and the things we apply and we find that those things work the best. The, the theory that we teach and the theory that we develop is deployed in practice and it helps us win this competition. I think that the key challenge of the SC2 competition is to perform a distributed collaboration with other teams where you have very limited information exchanged about what the other teams are doing. You have very limited resources and to effectively use those resources uh, with those other teams without being able to know exactly what those other teams are doing. It, it's very challenging. So we were fortunate coming into the competition to have a lot of the technical competency necessary to build the, the foundation of the radio from courses that Dr. Shea and Dr. Wong teach. Our core approach to the competition builds from our expertise in radio. That we, we start out, we build very fundamentally strong radio uh, built on theoretically sound principles. And on top of that, we start to layer the complexity, the machine learning algorithms, the artificial intelligence algorithms that will allow us to interact with the other teams and to understand the environment we're working in and to, to use that to optimize our performance. I think we think that uh, SC2 is an AI problem. One of the main things that we uh, use AI for is to uh, build an interference map, which basically uh, help us to understand how other teams' transmission affect us. Once we have the interference map, we use the AI to take that information in and try to digest that information together with other collaboration information so that we can assign the right amount of resource to uh, our radio system. So we feel that now is the great time for this competition just because there's so much more flexibility in what we can do right now. Uh, given the hardware and the software capabilities uh, of the servers and the software-defined radio, it gives us more flexibility in our radio design. We can make it more agile and adaptable, and we can also work better amongst the peer networks. We, we can collaborate better, share information better, uh, make observations. The hardware and the software has come to a point where we can do all this in real time and do it well. What makes our design unique is how adaptive our radio is. That it's very flexible in how it uses the available channels, uh, how it modulates the information or encodes the information. What that does is gives our artificial intelligence algorithm a lot of knobs that it can turn to control how, that, how our radios interact with the other teams. I think after SEE, if we win it, the first thing we'll do is go to Tahiti. Then we'll go and think about how can we actually build upon our success. Uh, in the SCE to really push this technology forward from the Colosseum to the real world. The sun never sets on Team Gator Wings, not because we're in different places around the world, but just because any time of day you can find one of us working on our project. We're, we're Team, Team Gator Wings. Gator Wings.
Try it just more casual. Yeah. Sorry, we're a bunch of engineers. Yeah.